Denver, Colorado. Good morning, y'all. Let's do it. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Let's go this way. Come on, bub. Got a couple expediters in the parking lot today. He's been looking for a spot for like 15 minutes. He's used to like pooping and peeing in bushes and <laughs> there's not a bush out here. <laughs> this is what he does. You done? You sure? Okay. We're done. We're gonna go. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Expediting America. And if it's your first time tuning in, you like what you see, hit that like button, comment below. Let me know you're new here and hit that subscribe button for me. Thank you very much. We picked up yesterday morning at 8 a.m. in Flint, Michigan, drove 1,200 miles here to Denver, Colorado. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. So this is our destination. What's up, dude? How you doing? Ready to go for a walk? <laughs> okay. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh yeah, you can. The moon's still out. And that's what we're delivering right there. Let's do it, Joe. Let's patrol the streets. It's crazy. They send me all the way this way just for two strips of metal. So random fact, I've probably driven by Denver 30 or 40 times in the past two years, but never actually delivered to Denver. So I never really stopped here to hang out and check out the downtown area and stuff. So we got time today. It's crazy they send me for these little pieces and you guys have this huge site to do, you know? If you could just sign and print anywhere, just as long as it's legible, yeah. Appreciate you coming down. We, we got a safety meeting with that one in the school. Yeah, that's what he told me. Some bullshit. <laughs> this one's mine now. Yep, one for you, one for me. What's your last name? Dahman, D-A-U. M-A-N. Because you are a dumb man. Where, where are you headed now? I'm going to get breakfast. And then uh, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to go after that. Every, every day is different, so I've been on jobs. I've just been on one to Grapevine, Texas. So we'll see if I get her or not. You, you, drive, you drive all around the United States? Oh, yeah. I do like three to 5,000 miles a week. Holy fuck. <laughs> where, where are you based out of then? Where are you I'm from Florida. I haven't been to Florida in months, though. I mean, I stay out. I live here now. I'm, I'm, I got rid of my apartment and everything. So okay. this is my life for now. For now. If you're ever on YouTube, uh, I got a YouTube channel called Expediting America. Okay. So if you ever... I'll are bored and want to check it out, out you know yeah. i got my dog with me i don't know if you saw him or not yeah. but he's chilling <laughs> good to see you buddy <laughs> thank you i appreciate you man have a great day enjoy that meeting yeah. <laughs> all right let's get out of here so we just dropped off and literally i turned on the dispatcher app and they have a load going uh pick up seven miles away going 81 miles south to colorado springs paying 189 so not even 100 miles paying 189 that's pretty good so i'm gonna go ahead and take that go to the pickup seven miles away and uh start our day with a little bang you know what i mean can't complain about that and then hopefully get something after that because that's not going to take long and uh god willing never know but just enjoying Denver as long as we can. Parked right outside the Church of Scientology. Funny story about the Church of Scientology. When I was 16, I performed for the Young Musicians and Singer Association, and um, it was in LA at the Scientology headquarters. And uh, it was a bunch of young kids, you know, we were 15, 16. And um, they try to make it seem like it was all about, you know, our talent and stuff like that. And then they took all the kids, all of us, and put us in a room and tried to convert us into Scientology. 
and make us pay like I don't know how many hundreds of dollars. We were out there broke, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't know, it was just weird, you know? Weird vibes. Come on, let's do it. So I don't know if you guys noticed this red leash here, but this company reached out to me. They make this strictly for cars and for dogs or cats, I guess, but uh, keeps him from falling out, which we almost had a case of that. I remember we were going down a windy road and I had the window down. And as you can see with this bed, it's pretty much level with the window. So this, you know, thank God we haven't had to use it yet, but gives me a little peace of mind when I'm riding around with, no, with the window down uh, that he's okay. Y'all waiting for some supplies? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna pull up here and... I'll move this way. All right. Does he ride with you everywhere? Yeah, he goes with me everywhere we go. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, so I booked this load using an app called Dispatch It. I tried it out for about 90 days, used it a couple times, and um, in some cases it worked out, in some cases, well, most cases it really didn't because you have to load and unload yourself and they don't really compensate you for it. For me, it wasn't worth it, but for some other people, it might be. You know, that's the thing about this business. What works for me might not work for you and what works for you might not work for me. All right, inside, Bubba. Let's go find a dog park. If you want to see what happened after I dropped off this load in Colorado Springs, click the link to this video right here. It's probably one of my favorite episodes where I go recover a load for a broke down van. And when I get there, the driver of the van actually bailed on me and made me unload and load it into my van, all 2,000 pounds, all by myself. I'm just going to open the door, bro, and I'm leaving. You can, there's no way you're going to get these things up one by one. There's no way. 